So this is how I made a state machine for my TVC flight software. I made a state machine, first of all, to organize my code and have a better overview of what the code was doing. And then second of all, to take a big and daunting task, such as creating flight software for a TVC rocket, and then breaking it down into more manageable parts, which you can take on one by one. So a state machine consists of states, of course. And in each of these states, the rocket does something different. For example, we have pad idle, pad countdown, and launch. And again, in idle, for example, we do something different than in countdown or in launch. But to go from idle to countdown, or from any state to any state, we have a state transition. For example, a countdown command from our radio, or a scrub to go back to idle, or a 10 second timer to go to launch. Another example of a state machine is a traffic light, where you have three states, namely wait, stop, and go. And in each of these states, you do something differently, you and the traffic light as well. And to go from one state to the other, you mainly have timers, or for example, a push button is also possible. How do you make them? Well, you could use logic gates, for example, and this is what's used in uh, your processor in your computer. But that's uh, not really manageable for our purposes. We are going to use code, uh, if else structure and a switch case structure. Both of these stru uh, structures are very similar, but the if else structure is more general purpose. You could have multiple checks uh, to, to a state transition, for example. Um, and the switch case structure is slightly faster and has a cleaner syntax. I started off with the if-else structure because I was used to it and I already used some if-else uh, statements. But then I switched to the switch case structure because even a small improvement in the speed uh, could make a big difference. So, how do we implement this in Arduino code especially? The Arduino code consists of two functions, the setup function and the loop function. The setup function is executed once, you probably know this, and then the loop function is executed multiple times, and forever. But what if you want this loop function to do different things in different stages of your flight, for example? Well, we will write out this loop function in different pieces of code, and we give each of these pieces of code a state. State 1, state 2, state 3, or count, count at idle and launch, for example. Uh, the loop function still goes through all this code every time. Now we could have an entry barrier. So this entry barrier consists of a variable called system state, for example, and it checks if the system state um, corresponds to the, the check. And if it is, it will enter the piece of code. And otherwise, it will just skip the code and go to the next entry barrier of the next state. So, for example, the pad idle state has an entry barrier called if pad idle, if system state is pad idle, for example, and then it can go to countdown, go back to pad idle, or go to launch. So this is how the actual code looks, the skeleton of your state machine. The if statements, as I said before, they have um, a check or an entry barrier to that state, and if the system state is not pad idle, for example, it will Check if it's bad idle, then say no, it's not, and go to the next statement. For example, let's say it, our system state variable is launch. It will first check system state is bad idle. No, let's skip all the code inside that state. Go to if, if system state is bad countdown. No, it's still not. Let's go to uh, the next barrier. And there we see system state is launch. Yes. And then we enter that piece of code and we execute that piece of code. So with the if else statement, we in our loop function, we, we keep looping around, but only enter one piece of uh, the code, one state. And the same is true for the uh, switch case structure. What's also important is that each of these states has a state change or something that it looks for a state change. Otherwise, you will end up forever in the same state, which is generally not what you want. So each state does something differently, but in each state you also have to look for a command or a timer or a button or whatever to put you into another state. Same is true for the switch case structure, of course. Let's now look at some actual flight software, uh, which has not been flown. However, the state machine does work. So state machine works, but the contents of the state machine might not. So keep that in mind. 
So this is uh, the actual uh, state machine that I use. Uh, it's it's built with the switch case structure. But before this, I used uh, the if structure. Uh, this this worked as well, but I switched to the switch switch case structure. First of all, you need to define your states. So my state, I have four states: pad idle, pad countdown, launch, and touchdown. And you can use this structure to uh, declare your states. What's actually happening is that pad state pad idle is not state pad idle; it's state zero. And state pad countdown is state one, and so on. And after this is done, we immediately set our system state to pad idle. So we start when we when we when we start our Arduino, it's immediately in pad idle. Scrolling down, we have our setup function where we again, for safety, put our system in pad idle. And then here is the actual state machine. So we have our switch case structure. And in pad idle, we detect countdown. This is a specific radio command that's sent out from ground and then it switches states to countdown. Um, when in countdown, it again listens to the radio for a scrub this time. But it will also read its battery uh, voltage level to see if it's sufficient for flight. But in countdown, we, we can not only go back to pad idle, we can also go to launch. So that's what the start launch uh, function is for. Here we have a timer and we ignite our pyro charge. And then if our like, acceleration is above a certain threshold, we, we change our system state to launch. And then when in launch, we do our active control stuff. We get our data from our MPU 6050, yeah. etc., etc., and we detect our next state called touchdown. Touchdown. If you want to have a parachute, you would have detect shoot or something like that, and add another state in here as well, which is something that I might do. And then the touchdown state is just there to exit the launch state. Uh, it doesn't really do anything but uh, an animation with the uh, buzzer and the LED. Okay, I have one last thing for you. This is uh, the implementation of the state machine. My flight computer is, is right here, and this is my ground control. Blue light indicates that it's in pad idle, and when I flip this switch, it should go over to pad countdown with a red LED. Like this. But let's say something bad happens right now and we want to abort or scrub the launch. We press the emergency stop button and we're back to pad idle with the blue LED. Okay, let's see what happens when we now fully uh, let the timer run, 10 seconds. Um, again, we will have our red light which indicates uh, the countdown state. And then right here we have an LED which indicates the pyro state, so the igniter charge. Okay, so this means the, 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 the charge is lit and the rocket motor will fire and, and we will enter our next state called launch. But for that launch, we need to have an acceleration. And as you can see, the rocket stays flat on the ground. There's no acceleration, so it, keeps, it, it stays in bad countdown. Okay, so that was it for this video. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions about anything, I'm still a small channel, so... Any question you will ask, I will probably see it and try my best to answer them. Maybe make a video on it. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.